everyone, it's time for our, uh, our final act of the night. And it, uh, it's, it's time to welcome onto our uh, little mini stage Mr. Dave Thackeray. Supposed to be passionate, but uh, it's a bit late. I don't know about you, but I want to go to bed. Not with all of you. That'd be weird. Anyway, aha! aha! Patron saint of podcasting, Mr. Alan Partridge. Thank you very much. Brilliant stuff. Three interesting things about this place. Sea Odyssey, apparently one of the organisers works up there. That is corrugated porn. And Don McAllister is the fourth very, very big podcaster in the world. In fact, he works very closely with Twit. Screencastsonline.com. If you want to know anything about Max, anything about Scrivener, in fact, probably anything about podcasting, it's probably on there. Sign up. Membership's very convenient, and I'm not getting any affiliate marketing out of that. All right. Podcasting. The new Frankenstein. What have I forgotten? Bacon. Anybody heard of Bacon? There's a conference going on tomorrow and Saturday in London. Anybody heard of it? Right. You won't want... If, if anybody wants two free tickets worth £400 each, get in touch with me after this. That's your bribe to stay. Right, podcasting. The new Frankenstein. Thank you to Dan for being amazing. Thank you to Graham for picking up Richard from the station. And podcasting the new Frankenstein. So, what we're talking about here, the guy on the right is just a drunken man. I was thinking originally of introducing this as a hug from a friendly drunken stranger. Because that, in a way, is a little bit what podcasting is all about. But we'll rock with the new Frankenstein because it's all about bringing stuff to life. And somebody asked about making money out of podcasting. I'm just about to say very shortly that, yes, you can make money. Apart from selling your body and apart from sponsorship, lots about that coming up. That's me and that's a book we're going to talk about. So let's get straight on. Static on this. Yeah, big time. Like it. Nice sponsorship. About me. Used to be a journalist. That's me before I started hacking the phone. Uh, that controversial. Alistair will know all about that. Moving on. Um, I am the podcast guy. That's me on the left, but not me. I'm top right of the left. Getting a bit confusing now. And that's me on the right, in the middle, on the left. Anybody who's following this, please, thank you, because I don't know what I'm talking about. On the left-hand side is a chap called Lou Mongello. Uh, spelled M-O-N-G-E, you don't really care. And he has a show called WDWradio.com, which stands for Walt Disney World Radio. He's not allowed to call it that because Walt Disney would sue him. However, he makes a lot of money off this show. And I've said all along, this is all about passion, it's all about personality, but what this guy has done over four or five years is create this incredible brand. He's really mad passionate about Disney. He can't get enough of Disney. And he's just developed this incredible site where he's got, he has got sponsors, but he's created books, he's created merchandise, he's been a TV speaker, he's the world's authority on Disney, which makes him mega books. So that's all good. The guy here doesn't. And uh, this is just a little tweet chat. We were talking about social media, a great way of basically getting some great traction for your podcast is having a tweet chat. So what happened here was uh, some chap called Mike, it's very lazy journalism, uh, again, Alistair, you'll know. And uh, so <laughs> but he was asking me all these questions on Twitter and I was responding to them and then he made this article about it. It's fantastic. Genius. But you can do all sorts of stuff with social media. You can do Twitter, you can use SoundCloud, you can use Facebook, you can use Google+, uh, and you can probably use Linux. So that's me. Uh, just three shows I've been involved with. Uh, that's Dan Lyons on the left, who is the tech editor of Newsweek in the US. He's also the fake Steve Jobs, uh, so he doesn't get a lot of work for that these days. Uh, in the middle, today's timeshare, obviously, because uh, I'm involved in podcasting. I have to do things that are a little bit right side of the track. And uh, the podcast guy show, Podcasting for Business. Uh, me out of focus because obviously I've got a face for radio and it works better that way. <laughs> I'm an ambassador for the European Podcast Award. And uh, very, very recently we put out a, a video announcing the winners. Uh, Dan, next year. Yeah? Uh, unless Graham pips you to the post. So this is uh, an award where we cover 10 countries and there were over a million votes, uh, about 
two and a half thousand podcasts, which doesn't actually make that many votes, all told. But it's great cachet, great kudos to be part of this, and anybody can enter. So once you've all done all your podcasts by the end of today, uh, start submitting, because I think we start rocking with 2012 in June. And uh, that is that. So, podcasting, who are they? Left hand side, you've got the egotist. On the right hand side, well, altruist, I guess. Uh, that's somebody who's very kind and giving, uh, if you haven't swallowed a dictionary like me. The reason why I say that is because podcasters who are egotists are passionate about themselves and they'll do lots and lots of shows that revolve around them. Generally not very successful. The altruists, like Mother Teresa, God bless her soul, are all about the value, they're all about giving, they're all about shared information, they're all about growing networks and just doing interesting stuff that benefits their listener communities. Good example, Dan, with your 30,000 listeners, essentially you're producing a show that is loved, you're giving them unique content, and that, I think, is the magical ingredient of podcasting. So, if I was going to try and sum it all up uh, with four kind of key ingredients of podcasting. The <laughs> first thing is, you know, you can't be an overnight success with this. The most important thing you've got to know is there's commitment involved. So don't think you're going to come in, be a one-hit wonder, create a show, suddenly get a sponsor, make a million dollars and retire to the Caribbean. It doesn't happen. Tenacity is very, very important. I'll just see what I've done here. Jeez. Wisdom is all about basically sharing your knowledge. You've got expertise. You've got a passion. And every single one of you, I don't know, you, we were talking to Helen and Joe before, music and the health and safety executive. You know, these are, these are key topics, and there's like six billion people out there. And there's loads of people who probably want to listen to what you've got to say. And expertise can be, I, I know podcasters who, who are green grocers. The Produce Picker podcast doesn't work well with microphones. Very, very successful. Get sponsored by fruit people. There's people who are dentists, doctors, Police officers, strippers, I don't send you any of those, but you can do it depending on what you want to do. Just be yourself and just exude your passion. Be who you want to be and do it on podcast because the best thing about podcasting, as Neil mentioned before, doesn't talk a lot of sense, but it's all about story. Yeah, It's theatre of the mind. It's sharing your enthusiasm and your passion using podcasting. And Frankenstein is a little bit about bringing your message to life. Anybody can blog, anybody can write, anybody can take photos. But where you start to engage is when you come to actually talk to people. It's like having a one-on-one -on -one dialogue. So think about that. Altruism, we've covered Teresa and the flip-flops. Truth is just very simply about being transparent, being authentic, being relevant, knowing what people want to hear and being yourself. Very, very important part of being a, an incredible podcaster. To put it another way, passion, these are the ingredients, that's a plate, there's a knife and fork. Passion is all about just wanting to do it, yeah? Dan's been doing this for years. I'm a newbie and novice compared to you, but he's very, very passionate about his music. He wants to share it with his community, he wants to be relevant, and he wants to do it as often and as much as he can. Two hours with Dan is two hours well spent. <laughs> Nosiness. Now... I mentioned about the journalist thing before. I'm naturally curious, and I presume we all are here. It's all about wanting to know that extra thing, and it's wanting to share it with people. And podcasting is just a piece of content marketing. It's a gateway drug to content marketing. I always say there's a, there's a book at the first slide, and we'll talk about that. But in that book, we talk about how it's a gateway drug, how... When you start podcasting, all of a sudden, if you've got a co-host like Dan has with uh, Linux Outlaws, you start talking about stuff and you start thinking, actually, we should probably explore that a bit more. Maybe that would make a great blog post. Maybe we can get press release out of it. If you're in business, podcasting can be such a really relevant and important part of your job. Community, again, it, this is all about the listener. Take the ego out of the equation. Less Simon Cowell, more Mother Teresa. Think about what you can share with the community and grow the community. Just like Lou Mongello with the Walt Disney <coughs> WDW radio podcast. You know, you've got to want to do it for those people. And the perseverance was covered before and the tenacity. That's got to be the commitment there. And lastly, experience. Now, you've all got 10,000 hours 
as Malcolm Gladwell would say, in something. I don't know, whatever it is, you will have a passion. You'll wake up in the middle of the night, first thing you'll do is probably go to the loo, but the next thing you'll do is go, oh, I've just had a great idea about that. Well, whatever it is, that will make great fodder for a podcast. So just get it out there and give it a shot. Our old friend Stretch Armstrong, if anybody here is old enough to remember, a great bit of fun with that. Surprise, the, the green goo inside is actually non-toxic, uh, uh, contrary to, to what my mother told me. Um, so this is all about reach, okay? So when you're doing a podcast, the greatest thing about doing a podcast is you've got to touch people in many, many different ways, uh, not like Gary Glitter. What I'm talking about is things like you touch people in the mind, you touch people in the eyes, you touch people and you touch people. You can write a blog and they can read it. You can create a podcast and they can listen to it. But I still say theatre of the mind is the most toxic way of getting through or the most incredible way of really engaging and waking up your audience. So that's something that I recommend you to do. Bringing your message to life, covered that earlier with the Frankenstein thing, a very much better looking version there. If you've got a message and you want to share it, you can share it on a blog post. But until you actually start talking about it and people can relate to you and they can really empathize with what you've got to say, you're missing out on a massive, massive opportunity. And the value thing again. So we talked about that before, the content marketing side of things, okay? So whatever it is you've got to say, you've got to understand, you've got to kind of siphon it, you've got to curate it, you've got to filter it. You're effectively a content concierge when it comes to podcasting. There are RSS feeds, there are millions of blogs, there's people who you speak to every day of the week. They've all got some little nugget of information to share with you. And this is the kind of stuff that is relevant and will be of interest. Dead easy when you're an expert at something, which we all are, to think everybody knows what we know and you couldn't be further from the truth. So start to give yourself a little bit of self-belief in what you know. Start sharing it. Create a course in it. You know, you can, there's a friend of mine, David Simon Garland, who runs a website called The Rise to the Top. And he started calling podcast masterclasses from the basis that, you know, this is new, unshared information. It's relevant. It's something that can make you money. So quite aside from the, the sponsorship and the donations and the merchandise, you can actually package podcast products uh, bundle them together in a series and sell them on and make a, make a good bit of dosh out of it. And lastly, the community thing. This is really, really cool. Um, something called the network effect comes into play here. Don't know what you like doing. And Dan mentioned Alexi Sale. Perfect example. If you've got an interest and you've probably got a lot of inspirations, okay, you've probably got 10 or 15 people who you really want to get close to or find out more about or understand what goes through their head. So the greatest thing about podcasting is you've got your own radio station and all of a sudden everybody wants to be your friend. It's like, yeah, I'll get on your radio station. I'll talk about this because it's a little bit of fame and everybody's got a bit of Simon Cowell's ego. So think about 15 people that you're really, really keen to talk about or that you like to follow their Twitter streams or they're just influential to you in some way and invite them on your show. And I'd probably be surprised if you didn't get 60% of those people coming back and saying, let's make a date. And those people in your network have got communities. And if you create a radio show, they'll share that show using their ego as leverage with their communities. Absolute gold, and it'll build your own community. Think about that. And the podcasting brings them closer. So the last thing to say on this is, you know, you can write at people. You can tweet at people. You can create Facebook status updates. But nothing gets people closer than face-to-face -face marketing. And podcasting is probably the nearest that any of us are going to get with our customers today, with having a global audience. And there's, there's people everywhere. And they're not going to be right on your doorstep. They're not going to be at your shop counter. So this is a perfect way, using your personality, or, or in my case, not, to get people closer through podcasting. A friend of Liverpool here. Been a couple of times. She loves all you guys. Uh, she's not been on my show. Uh, so I just want you to think about that. Engagement is so important. Value is everything. Community can be built using podcasting. 30,000 listeners. You were talking earlier today. Has you got, that's not even a sentence, is it? Have you got more listeners than Radio City? You probably have. You know? Who are you going to want to listen to? Pete Price or this man here? I'll let you draw your own conclusions on that one. And lastly, the Frankenstein effect. Okay, just to wrap things up a little bit, this is what it's all about. 
we're dormant, we're trying to cut through noise, we're trying to make a difference doing whatever we're doing and we're writing things and we're trying to think of the next great idea. Well, why not use what we've already got and start really inspiring people and start educating people and just taking it to the next level? Because that's what podcasting will do and that's why you all need and you, you all look a bit like the Frankenstein effect. So, there we go. And just to finish off and seal the deal here with a few facts. Now, a friend of mine, we, we mentioned before C.C. Chapman, uh, a friend of mine, Christopher S. Penn, who was the founder of PodCamp in Boston a good few years ago. And we were having a good chat about how important it is that podcasting get more recognition. Smartphones are everywhere. You've got broadband wherever. You've got broadband in that toilet. Um, I can prove it. And um, so the really important thing is, is that more people have got access now, wherever they are, in what environment they're in. It doesn't matter. They can listen to your show. 30% in a year jump in the weekly online radio audience. This sort of stuff is gold. I mean, it's crazy. The guys at Edison Research and Arbitron put this thing together every year, and they know their stuff. 30% increase. I mean, it's not like we're talking two to two and a half. This is millions to many, many millions more. Really, really important. Don't just think of podcasting as radio. It's got to be the seeing stuff as well as the listening stuff. Don't just come in their ears, come in their eyes. Smartphone ownership tripled in two years. This is massive. This is brilliant stuff and so relevant to us. And as well, the majority of Americans who we don't really care about own a portable digital media device, right? So you can sell stuff to America probably easier than you can next door. And lastly, social media, it's all about the old folk. So it doesn't necessarily have to be something that is relevant to 18-year-olds here. 45 plus, game on. You know, why not talk to them? They're the ones with the money, the baby boomers. Right. If you don't want the bacon tickets, well, I've got something else for you. I've just written a book called uh, Marketing As Your Customers Like It. It's completely free. Um, I'm like that. Um, Simple sales strategies for sustainable success. And it, as a linchpin, as a pivot, uh, it's got a bit of podcasting in there. We talk a little bit more about content marketing and how to make it work for you. So if you want it and you want to be that big smiley acidy face over there, have a quick word with me and I'll drop you on by email. And that's me done. So if anybody's got anything to say, I'm Dave Thackeray and I'd love to speak to you more. Thank you. <laughs> Aha! Any questions? Have you got a time and place of that? Can be arranged. <laughs> Christmas, as usual. Sorry, serious questions. Great, gotta go. Wow. <laughs> Shall I ask me a question? I'll, I'll jump in, I'll jump in. I'll think of one. Now, when you talk about the global audience uh, and building communities, uh, I'm actually born on a uh, local community radio station in Liverpool. Sure. So we all be online radio. So we're always aware, first and foremost, of our local audience. First of all, in the Kenton and Fairfield, then Liverpool, then... Do you work with Steve Farragut? I do. Good man. Yeah, yeah. Everybody knows Steve. <laughs> yeah. But my point is, that how do you build a community? What sorts of subjects could you engage people with if you talk to people in Mozambique or Boston? Or Kensington or Google, do you know what I mean? Let me turn around, what do you want to talk about? Sex. Well, there's plenty of opportunity for that in Mozambique, they love it over there. Um, I guess the, the important thing is, is you've got to know who your target audience is. You can't just say global, right? That's a nice side effect. So if you want to talk about sex to people from Kensington, they're going to have their own preferences. And it's kind of finding out a bit more about what they like about sex. And then kind of talking about the issues that affect them. Maybe getting a panel in. Dan does very, very well with his co-host. Seb, is it Seb, did he say? Fab. Fab, yes. Fab. Um, so, you know, having somebody in there to kind of have a different perspective who knows and understands the different ways that people like to hear stuff. So, you know, you've got a, if you're talking contentious issues, it's great to have a co-host because all of a sudden, if they don't like what you've got to say, chances are they'll be able to empathise with, you know, host number two. So uh, it, it's purely and simply all about understanding what that audience wants and then building on that and getting them to spread the word. And, you know, word of mouth is an incredible, powerful thing. And then once you've actually built something with that community, you've got a product that technically you could package. You could get five or six of the episodes all together and send them out as a big bundle that you can sell on iTunes. You know, there's, there's, there's an infinite opportunity there. 
it's just having the passion for it is so important. Dave, Dave, stay here, Dave. We're going to get uh, Dan back up, and we're going to get Don McAllister up as well from the audience. And uh, and we are, in the words of Neil just now, going to have a three-way. And uh, any questions from the audience for, for this wonderful trio of people? Um, fire away. Um, I'm going to step out of the line. Has anybody got any questions left? We've had quite a big kind of discussion. <laughs> um, it doesn't look like it. Does anybody want to ask anything about podcasting? All right, well, very quickly, um, we've kind of talked about already tonight about why we think you should have a podcast. Um, but a few years ago, I was asked to, to talk at um, a marketing event, of all things. Why didn't ask Dave? I don't know, because he's far better at that kind of thing. Um, but at a marketing event about using podcasting for marketing products and so on. And I gave a big talk about podcasting, why it was great. And at the end... This lady in the front row said to me, why should I have a podcast, though? It doesn't make any sense. And at the time, I didn't know what to say, which wasn't very good. <laughs> um, so I just kind of went, uh, uh, uh. Um, but, <laughs> but I realized at the end that how many of you here have blogs? You know, how many people write blogs? Okay, I know Stuart does. Okay, so Eddie's got one. So the same reasons that you have a blog are the reasons that you should have a podcast. If, you know, it's exactly the same. It's about spreading your ideas and getting to know people and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that was just something I was going to say, because I never, I didn't get the chance to give her that answer all those years ago. And that looks really bad now, because I'm getting really angry. I've got a red stripe in my hand. I'm going, uh, I'm angry ranting. Yeah, but I just thought I'd share that with you as a thought. So nobody's got any questions about, oh, Francis? Don's built a community, haven't you, yeah. really, yeah. of yeah. engaged yeah. people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, hello, everybody. Uh, just in case you're wondering why they've dragged me up here for this last session, I, I'm a full-time podcaster, and I've been doing that since 2005. And it's, it's slightly, before I, and I will respond to your, your, your point, but just to sort of position what I am and where I'm coming from. Um, uh, with doing it full-time, I've sort of turned it into a business rather than just a hobby. And it started off as a hobby, but it's now a business. And I have a membership scheme where people pay... Uh, pay to receive premium content that I generate. I generate free content, but there's premium content as well, and I built quite a big audience up, you know, sort of worldwide who, who are into Apple stuff. So that's who I am and what I do. But going back to your point about, um, and, and something I've always felt about podcasting is it is a very personal thing. And when you listen to a podcast, uh, it's not like receiving a normal marketing message or, or, or reading something on a blog. You actually make a connection with the person. You actually do hook in to their tone of voice, you get to know their mannerisms, you get to know their attitudes, and it's a very, very personal connection, and it can be an extremely powerful marketing, a way of marketing something, or promoting stuff to, to you know, people who follow you, or people who are interested in what you're interested in, and I mean, it, and it, it's, it's so weird that just how much people get to know you once you do start doing a podcast. I remember a couple of years ago, I, I had a, a, a tutorial. I do uh, tutorials about the Mac and about the iPad and the, and the iPhone. And I, I had a, 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 an application lined up to do a particular podcast on in one week. And I couldn't do it. And I was really enthusiastic about this podcast. I really wanted to cover this particular application, and I couldn't cover it for, for whatever reason. I think that I'd been in touch with the developer, and there was another version coming out or something. So I actually didn't do that. I sort of pulled it at the last minute, and I did something else that I wasn't so enthused about. And I was a little bit naffed off to be honest because I really wanted to cover this other application and I got three or four emails the following week saying are you okay because you sounded a bit down at the last show you know and it was totally un unknown to me I, I just thought I was just doing a normal podcast 
But because people sort of tune into you, um, it's an ex extremely powerful medium. And, and you know, if, if you are going to use it for marketing, and again, people do trust, you know, they, they build up a trust with you as well. So I would say, you know, you, I never, ever cover any application I would never recommend personally to somebody. I mean, I, I do, okay, I, I don't anymore. I used to take sponsorships, but now it's sort of, sort of like my, all my tutorials are, are sponsor-free, and I, I just cover applications that I think are really good and I think would benefit people to know about and sort of show them how to use it. So that's just a, a couple of points about, you know, building relationships with the audience, how such a powerful medium it is, and people do get to know you just from the, you know, the sound of your voice. It's, it's, it's very difficult, and I think it's more difficult now than it was when, when we started, because, you know, I mean, I started in 2005 very much as a hobby, and, um, you know, just threw a couple of sample shows out there, and they sort of got some traction. And the only reason I sort of went into full-time podcasting was that, you know, people were, were, I wasn't asking for money, but people wanted to donate to cover my bandwidth costs, and it, you know, and, and I just sort of thought... It sort of grew and grew, and then it got to the point where I thought, well, actually, if I, if I, do, if, if I just add a little bit more extra value, perhaps I could start charging for this. And um, it, it just sort of grew sort of pretty much organically, very much by word of mouth, uh, very much by uh, cross-promotion on other podcasts. So although I do my own podcast, I'm a regular uh, uh, participant in probably three or four podcasts that you know, are free podcasts and are just you know, sort of Mac punditry and uh, uh, panel shows and stuff like that. So it, it's very difficult, and um, there's no real hard and fast rules on how you actually build the audience. Um, as I say, in my case, it's pretty much by word of mouth. I don't really do any typical marketing. Uh, it's very much sort of cross-promotion on, on other podcasts is the main way probably I do at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, I think the thing with podcasts that people need to, to understand is, is that if you're going to do Rick Smith's and you look at the magazine rack, you could do a podcast on any of those magazine titles and find a niche. Um, there's a couple out in the States who do um, a podcast about knitting. And you'd think, what podcast about knitting? But they've got tens of thousands of subscribers and they have a video podcast. Now, the guy is actually already, he, he already was a videographer. But they started off this video about um, knitting, and they've grown it and grown it. They've got all sorts of sponsorship deals with yarn, you know, fabric manufacturers. And, and I, don't, I'm not, I don't think they do it full-time, but they certainly make a very good you know, living from it. And I wouldn't fall into the trap of, of pushing too hard the fact you can make a million with podcasting. You, know, if you can't. Most people can't. Um, the reason that I've been able to, to monetize it is because I, I sell training videos and it's very easy to assign a value to that if it's valuable to you uh, if it's a more of a general interest podcast it's more difficult to monetize that but you know there are niches you, you, you were you know if, if you do like a knitting podcast uh, contact the knitting manufacturers build the audience you know you, they, they have a global um, coverage really because knitting is the same in any country and they, they, they make a nice profit from it you know so it's really finding the niche that you're passionate about and finding a way to get that out to your audience and then, you know, the, if there are other knitting podcasts that they can go on, they probably do. And that's the way you actually just sort of spread the word. But it's probably a lot easier now with all the social media stuff that, that you have available to you to try and reach that target audience. Sorry, I, again, we'll have a few stupid questions. How do you take donations? Do you just take a, a PayPal? Do you do that on your, on your yeah, and if you just, yeah, just, just use a PayPal address and say send donations to this address. And, really? yeah. yeah. And you don't have PayPal, do you just say give me money? Yeah. Well, you yeah. just yeah. You just some people do. Some people just have a link on the website. If you want to donate, you know, send click this button and it opens PayPal and. Sorry. To, to be honest, I don't um, I don't ever really push on people. You know, give me money, give me money, give me money. Um, I guess I'm just fortunate that some people do want to give you money for what you do. And strangely, just as I was sat over there, my phone beeped and I had an email from someone in Australia who's just given me twenty quid doing the podcast. Um, I don't know why I shared that with you, but it seems slightly relevant. 
And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and Dave's now wanting, yeah, he wants free drinks. Um, but, you know, I didn't ask, specifically ask that. I don't know the guy. I didn't specifically ask him. But for some reason, he finds a value in the show, and he's just decided to send me 20 quid, which is great. Um, it's strange. I'm sure if you went in the bank and told the bank manager that was your business model, that you just people will give you money because they feel like it, he'd probably kick you out the door. But, um, but it happens. And, um, I mean... It just seems to, yeah, for some reason it works. I mean, what I do is I always just say at the end of the show, you know, if you want to help us to pay the costs and so on, then you can send money here. And that's all I do, and then I move on. I don't give it a big, you know. Um, I think it, it, a lot of it's to do with, for me, I think, it's a lot of it's to do with being, I don't know, genuine, I suppose. If you're, if you, I mean, if you, if you, if we talk about marketing campaigns, it's one of the big things that really pisses me off about marketing campaigns is they're so false, a lot of them. And, you know, I'm not, I haven't got a big agenda or anything, and I'm just trying to be myself. And that seems to come across in some way, like Don said, about people get to know you, and they like you for some reason. There's something about radio, I think, or audio kind of medium that that, that does that. I don't know what it is, um, but people kind of identify with it. Um, it just quickly on the on the promotion thing you were asking before. Um, I think um, Don mentioned the fact that you can, um, you know, look for a niche or something. I didn't specifically do that, but. I was, we were very fortunate that um, there's a magazine called Linux Format, which is, there's not a lot of Linux magazines, to be honest with you, uh, which is probably the best known. Uh, it's not free, no. It's not free as in beer, anyway. Um, um, but that's, you know, take it up with them. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, they, they did a review of podcasts back in 2008. So we'd been going a little while by then, about um, 12 months maybe or, or a little bit less. And they uh, ranked us uh, top in their podcast review. And we didn't know that they were going to do that. It just happened. And I didn't even know that they were going to do that review until someone said, oh, congratulations on that review and coming top in that thing. And I, I, just, I just said, what do you mean? What thing? And then I found out. And that helped us to get a lot more listeners. But that's kind of difficult because I, you know, I don't have a relationship with the magazine. I couldn't go to them and say by the way, can you make us top in this thing and do a thing about it? It just happened. But I think a lot of it is kind of fortune. But I think if you, if you, if you are genuine and you, you have, you're passionate about something, which Dave was talking about, and you know, it can convey that to people and people will respond in some kind of way. Um, I don't know if you've got any thoughts on that. No, um, so, right, two more things. Community, if you know what you like, you can build a community. Come and they will build it. Um, but the other thing is, we talked a little bit about tech and we skirted around it and uh, this is where Don comes and beats me up. You can use an Android phone to record your first podcast. You can use Audioboo or SoundCloud and you can record straight into this bloody thing. And straight away you've got the bones of your first podcast, which is amazing. You know, you don't need, you don't even need a headset like Graham's got to start off. Now obviously your best way would be to record a bit of atmospheric stuff on this, record your voice and that of a guest on this, and go into Audacity, which is audacity.sourceforge.net, version 2 just out, free of charge. Um, go in there, do a bit of editing, put a bit of music in, um, before you know it, you've got a podcast. And the next last thing you're going to hear from me tonight, Spreaker.com. Now, I talked about uh, hosting, which is all very well and good. Libsyn is brilliant. Archive.org is free. Spreaker allows you to broadcast live, which is just mind-blowing. So you can reach out directly. You can have a player on Facebook. People can listen to you on Facebook live. Not only that, guess better, ladies and gentlemen, three for a tenner. So when you finish that and you're putting it out, what happens then is that it publishes the RSS feed automatically for you, really simple syndication. And you only need to do, if you're going to use FeedBurner, which makes it a bit more difficult, simple. All you need to do is take the RSS feed from Spreaker.com, go to iTunes, submit a podcast, put that code in that field, hit return, whammo, you've got a podcast. It's that easy. Just keep it up, give it a shot. Yeah, and, and Dave mentioned iTunes there. Um, obviously, iTunes is a massive um, podcast directory, but there are other ones as well. And for promotion, um, one of the things we did quite early was, obviously, we listed our show on iTunes, but also we put it into uh, Podcast Alley. I don't even know. Is that still going now? Uh, yeah, it was going. There was a thing called Podcast Alley that's been that long. I haven't looked. 
Yeah, and there's Podbean, and there's some other ones as well. Um, there are like directories uh, of podcasts, and you can list it in, you know, say your podcast is about cars, you can list it in the car section, and people can vote it up and down. So if people do start listening to it and, and start voting it up, more people will notice it, and if they like it, they'll start voting it up, and it can kind of rise up the charts, if you like, in that way. Um, does any... Sorry. Yeah. Just one other thing about iTunes as well. It, it is like the the premier or the main area where people will pick up podcasts. And when you're new, when you just started, rather than asking for donations, which you, know, you, you probably won't want to do straight off the bat, ask for reviews and ratings on iTunes because that pushes you up the charts in iTunes. And because that's where most people actually go to to look, you know, that's, uh, if you can get into the top charts, it like you know, just, just propels you along a bit better. And it's, it's quite easy to do. It's quite easy to get into the charts on iTunes because they use some really weird algorithms. And if you're a new podcast... And you get um, you know some ratings and some reviews. You will actually get up the charts in iTunes very very quickly. Yeah. So, anybody have any points or anything you want to say, or, or are you all ready to go home? <laughs> go for yeah, it. Um, I'm just interested um, what you guys think about the way you know when podcasting originally came about. The internet was a lot slower. Um, mm -hmm. There was no such thing as YouTube. Mm -hmm. is, is that kind of you know impinged on um, podcasts, etc. But YouTube. Can, well, the fact uh, that people can, you know, just upload something very quickly, it doesn't cost anything. Um, I, now I would say it hasn't impinged on podcasting. You know, in, in many ways, it's actually made things easier as a podcaster because, you know, we can use those tools as well. Um, I think, yeah, um, it's, it's become... The, the great thing for me about podcasting and a lot of things, you know, YouTube, all these kind of things, is the kind of democratization of it, that anyone can throw something up there. doesn't mean it's going to be good. doesn't mean it's going to be popular. But you've got a chance. Everybody's got a chance. And it might get a million views or something crazy. You don't know. You know it could be something stupid like, what was that, Charlie bit my finger or whatever. It's that really massive, <laughs> most watched up video ever on YouTube or something. Um, you know, it could be stupid, but it could work. But I don't think it's... it's, it's um, caused a, a deterioration in, in podcasting. More people are doing it now, um, which probably means that the quality is not as, not always as high as it was, but I think it's good that people get a chance to do it. Um, do you guys want to come in on that? Yeah. Um, YouTube is great because it gives you another bite of the apple. I use something called the podcasting pyramid. You start off with a video, face to face. You can use Wirecast, which is a way of creating your own TV channel. You take that using snipmp3.com, take the audio out, you've got a podcast. Transcribe that, you've got a blog post. So straight away from one piece of content, you've got three. Three different ways of reaching that one person. The auditory or the video tree or the eye tree. Whatever, you can do it that way. Just figure it out and just use these tools. Don't fear them. And the only thing I would put, as far as the technology, the technology is great. You know, we've got faster upload speeds, we've got higher capacity, you know, faster devices that will use uh, HD video, etc. So that's great from, from our point of view. But the thing with a podcast as well, if you look back to the definition of what a podcast is, you know, it's, it's this RSS feed, it's syndication of episodic material that gets pushed out automatically from people. And people still like that. You know, one, they, they sort of glom onto uh, a person's personality. They like their style of presenting. They like what they're saying. So they subscribe. And then, you know, the new content is pushed out to them, to their, you know, you know mobile devices or to their Mac or whatever, or PC. So um, YouTube, I, I think, still people sort of cherry pick and go in and pick up a video and pick up a video here and, you know, do that sort of thing. But with a podcast, you're sort of expecting episodic regular content to be pushed out to you and I think that, that's quite a significant difference to, to lots of the other services that are out there at the minute. Mm -hmm. And would you su suggest a weekly, a daily, a fortnightly show, that sort of thing? Well, well my, personally it's what you can do. Mm -hmm. Don't be too ambitious. Um, you know, we, uh, Graham before talked about pod fade. It's you know it's so easy to, to, to pod fade, especially if you're really super hyped up at the beginning and you you're really going for it and you're doing too many episodes. You can easily burn yourself out very very quickly. Uh, and also, you'll know that you know if the response isn't if you're not getting the response back that you anticipate, you know that can sort of bring you down really. So it's what you're comfortable with, what you can manage. Um, audio is different from video. Video takes a lot more effort to actually put together. So that probably needs to be factored into it as well. You know, you can probably, um, I mean, for me to do, a, 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 I do two shows a week now, and that probably takes a good three days of production. And I, I do it full time, so it's like three days. Um, so, and, so I do two a week, but that's, that's, that's after four or five years' experience, really, of doing it and 
honing the production process down. Really. And an hour long for each show? Uh, it's about half an hour for each. <coughs> so 40 minutes for one, 20 minutes for the other, yeah. yeah. But you're doing video. Well, that's video, yeah. Audio's... Um, I, would, I would say similar to kind of what Don said, really. I don't think you should do more shows than you've got comfortable content for, you know, that you've got reasonable content for. I don't think that me putting 20 shows a week online of low quality is going to improve my reputation. I'd rather have one show, maybe even a fortnight, whatever it might be, that's the best that I can make it. That's just my personal feeling. Because I think that is better for, for, you know, for building the audience and for keeping the quality up. I think that matters. I wouldn't necessarily say volume is better than quality, if you know what I mean. Because people are going to have the time to listen to it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Give people less and make them want more, right? So if you think you can handle it fortnightly, do monthly, get them wanting more, and then if you've got time to do it, go for the two weeker. But like Dan said, you know, it's not a quick process. It is fairly labour intensive, even you know, if you're doubling the amount of time that you're editing into a live mix. So just be comfortable. Don't let the audience down. Be as frequent as you're comfortable with and just be consistent because as soon as you start dropping, it's like a radio show. You're never going to get Jeremy Vine, God bless him, um, being anything more than a daily show. Otherwise, people will freak out more than they do. So. Interesting. Um, so has anybody got any final points or questions or anything before we wrap it up and, and have a drink before we go home maybe? No, I think that's a good good moment to end on. Um, thank you all for coming and listening and stuff. I think it's great. Um, I don't know why I'm doing the thank yous. Neil should be doing this. But <laughs> <laughs> thanks to Don for jumping up at the last minute. Uh, we had some questions earlier about making podcasting into a business. If you want to know about that, Don's the man to ask. If you want to know about marketing and podcasting, Dave's the man to ask. If you want to know about, I don't know, obscure music, ask me. <laughs> um, or obscure software, <laughs> you can ask me. Um, I'm not thanking SoundCloud, they can get lost, they didn't give me a t-shirt. The problem with SoundCloud is, right, they don't make t-shirts big enough to fit me, so... 